All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Just giving a few minutes for everybody to join. My name is Steven. I'll be taking you through the system today. I'm kind of just going to do a, a basic overview um, just on how McCormick can help you avoid common pitfalls in the MEP estimates. So um, when you sign in with a username and password, this is where we will arrive here. So we, this is what we call the job screen. Uh, basically, it's a digital filing cabinet where you'll have all your past jobs or current jobs you may be working on. Uh, no limitations here as well. So you can have you know thousands of jobs in this history. Um, you could always go to the top, search by job name or you know search by estimator. You can find that job very quickly if you need to. Um, you can also customize the screen how you want you know we can create these tabs up at the top here uh, these are just some examples on my system uh, just you can really you know put whatever you want and make these tabs to organize where you're putting your jobs we also have these columns here uh, and you have the ability to put you know what information you want on this job screen so you can go into setup here and you can decide what you want to show on that job screen so you can get into some good details here and really, what you're going to be doing uh, on this screen is either opening up an existing job or you're going to be creating a new job. So one of two things. I may open up an existing job to, you know, pull reports from it or, you know, I may go in to finalize it or maybe it's a few months down the road and I'm coming in to do a change order. So those are some of the reasons why you'd open it an existing job, otherwise I'm creating a new job. So I'm actually gonna utilize this job here, 149 West Boston. It's a job we have in process on the system. So hitting the details on that, I would have the same screen here if I hit new job, just without this information provided on the right. So at a minimum, you wanna name the job and then you can add in this detailed information if you'd like. And this actually populates into the proposal sheet at the end, because you could take it from your PDF all the way to the proposal on our system. Now we're gonna jump over to DEP drawings. So this is where we're gonna bring in our plans. Um, you can create some folders here, just a way to stay organized. Uh, you just right click on sheets, add a folder and name it whatever you want. And I'll just make one uh, for an example and say, hey, you know, this one's gonna be, uh, you know, revision plans. So I can keep all my revision plans separate from my originals, right? So just a way to stay organized, but to actually bring in the drawings, what we're gonna do is hit add drawings. This will access the computer file explorer, and then from here, uh, you could bring in any imaging file from PDF, TIFF, JPEG, PNG, uh, any Google Earth, you know, really any Google images. It's totally fine. Um, and you can bring in multiple files at once, even if one file may have, you know, 150 plans in it. So um, I'll show you that. I'll go ahead and I'll drag all these files in and I'll hit open. This is really cool. So what it does is it actually brings you to this preview mode where it separates all your plans out for you from each folder. So now I can go through here to see, hey, what plans do I wanna tie into this job? So I can go through here, I can import selected plans that I want, or I can just import all. So I'll just go ahead, I'm gonna import all. Now I have all these plans tied to my job. So I can go into this plan and do some customization if I'd like, uh, whether I'm changing you know, description name, uh, I can set a scale at this point, but it will prompt you to set a scale in Design Estimating Pro, so you don't have to do that here. Uh, you can also color code it by status and leave notes. And really that's gonna wrap up step number one. So we take you through a five-step process here at McCormick one through five step process and that will wrap up our first step just creating a job and bringing in our plans that's going to lead us into our second step what we call labels and that's exactly what we're doing here so we're labeling and organizing where we're putting our takeoff right so this is just an example for this job specifically broken out by areas and systems that's very very common uh, that may be similar to how you do things so in our first column, we set up our bid packages. So we have a base bid, we have an alt one. You may have alt two, alt three, alt four. You may show four alternative prices for this job or option one, option two, depending on how you want that. Um, you can also set up your change orders too. If you come back into this job folder and create this, uh, that's actually unique to McCormick, I wanna mention. You know, you don't have to have a change order program or uh, actually, you know, fire up a whole new job. You could do it within the same job folder. So very convenient. And then the next column here, we have it broken out into areas. Now, if this was a bigger job, you know, this could be maybe buildings um, and then broken out maybe into floors and then into areas and then systems. So that's why we do provide you with the five columns. You can 
get as detailed as you want to with breaking down the job. So essentially we're working granular from left to right. So each column is a subset of the previous. So this is a very basic step. However, you're gonna get as detailed as you'd like on your extension report in our fourth step on the reporting side. So I can see just a report for let's say Office B power, right? Or warehouse data and telephone, right? So this is something you wanna think about when creating those labels. How detailed do you wanna get on your reporting? And now that I've created my labels and I'm happy with it, I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that. That's gonna lead us into our third step takeoff. First thing I wanna mention is this dropdown is what we call the active label set. So here we have our you know, bid packages, we have our areas in our second column, and then in the third column we have our system. So right now I'm currently on base bid Office A power. So if I were to do any takeoff right now, that's specifically where it's going. That's how that act active label set works. Now over here, we have the database. So we have an items database and we have an assemblies database. So we can go ahead and just start with items, which is just one single part. Now to find material in this database, what you're gonna do is utilize this menu. So it's super easy to find material. It's only three or four clicks and you can hone in on exactly the material look you're looking for. So uh, it's pretty um, generic in that first column and then it gets more detailed as we go to the right. And that's something to remember on our system is everything's left to right. So if you keep that flow throughout the system, you'll get your hands around it very easily. It's a very user-friendly program. So let's take a look. We'll just go ahead and do wire, copper, we'll say stranded, copper, THHN, stranded wire. And now here's all my THHN copper stranded wire. So I can go ahead and select that wire. And at this point, you know, I can do some manual takeoff if I wanted. So this is if it, like I didn't have digital plans or, you know, maybe I just did a job walk. I just wanted to take off some material manually. I can do that. I can literally just type into my keyboard, let's say 200, enter. Now I've taken off 200 feet of that wire. So it's in my audit trail. My audit trail is basically my receipt. It's meant to track my work. So what we have here is what's been taken off. We have the quantity we took off. We have who took it off, the date and time stamp of when it was taken off, and then how it was taken off. So the M in the audit trail, that stands for the manual entry. Okay, and now we're gonna jump over to assemblies, uh, which, is in a, which is a makeup of items, right? So uh, now we have items inside of these assemblies. And, you know, same thing, uh, if you guys are in the mechanical side, the plumbing side, uh, what we would give you is basically two instances of McCormick, uh, one with the electrical database, uh, the other, you know, with the, uh, the plumbing, uh, depending, you know, if you do both or just one or the other. Uh, but we'll have a, you know, fully loaded uh, database for plumbing and mechanical that we'll provide you with. And it's the same thing. Uh, so just, you know, kind of substitute the material I'm taking off for the electrical side for the plumbing, because at the, really we're doing the same thing. We're counting, we're measuring. So same system. All right, now that I'm on assemblies, I in fact have a different menu and it says assemblies. So let's go ahead and take a look at some receptacles. So what we'll do, we'll go devices, we'll just do standard grade and then I'll select my receptacles. Now here's my list of receptacles. I'll go ahead and just select this duplex standard. And since we're on assemblies, I can now hit buy products and show you guys everything inside of that assembly. So very detailed and these are all pre-built. So when you buy the system, you have all these assemblies. So mud ring, ground screw, box support, plate, box, the receptacle, all of that's included. So when I take it off digitally in my in, in Design Estimating Pro, all of that's included. So very complete. Um, you can do a lot of customization in McCormick, like I've mentioned, uh, especially in the database, whether I want to add material to the database, uh, if I wanted to adjust these pre-built assemblies, you can do that very easily. Uh, I can also delete material out of the assemblies. I can change the name of this if I wanted to. Uh, so you have a lot of customization and you can really tailor the system to how you do things. Now, if I change my label set to Office B, my audit trail goes blank because I haven't done takeoff for Office B. That was for Office A. So this is, so my audit trail is specific to my label, active label set. Okay, we've gone over the menu, how to find material. Here's the database and the audit trail. Now let's go ahead and jump into Design Estimating Pro. So this is our built-in digital takeoff system. 
First thing we're gonna do is select our plan. So we're gonna go to the top here. Here are those folders we created. Let's go ahead and open up our power plan. I'll just select this power plan here. Now, next thing you wanna do here is set a scale. So it will prompt you to set a scale. Um, I have three different options when setting a scale. I can hand enter one, I can set one from a known point, or I can go ahead and put in that scale. And then we also provide you with engineering scales. So I'll just go ahead and do my one eighth equals a foot and now my scale is set. It's all mouse control too, so zooming in, zooming out is the scroll wheel, and then panning around is clicking my scroll wheel down. So all mouse control, very simple to utilize. Now I'm just gonna do basic counting and basic measuring, and then I'll dip into some of these amazing features we provide. So let's go ahead into my database and grab a duplex 20 amp. So that's highlighted right now. So that will be shown as my active part in Design Estimating Pro. We could see that in this bottom left corner. And then on the bottom right corner, we have the active label set. Where is it going? This is gonna go into my base bid for Office B Power. And now I'm just gonna go through here and left click to take off these receptacles. Now with each click, it's accounting for everything in the assembly, the price of the material, and the labor hours to install. So very complete. And as I'm marking my plan, it's being estimated at the same time. That's what makes us a true all-in-one system. If I go take a look at my audit trail right now, look, there's the 23 that I took off. And there's the P, which stands for Pro, and there's the drawing that it's on. So very complete. You don't have to transfer all the information into another system. You know, you don't have to, you know, save it. And, you know, it auto saves as you go, and it's estimated as you mark your plan. Tons of customization within Design Estimating Pro as well. I have assembled it in, inside, uh, built in, already pre-built. So here we go, I can set it as a duplex. So now this is really good for the design build side. Uh, you know, if you guys are working off blank plans, you, you know this symbol, you know what you're looking at. So you can, you know, adjust these symbols to whatever you want. Uh, and we actually have a symbol designer inside of the program as well, where you can build out in 2D if you wanted to build out any additional symbols from what we provide. So that's very useful. All right, that's basic counting. We'll go ahead and do some basic linear takeoff. I'm gonna go ahead and select this branch. Uh, we'll just do EMT. Uh, here's my different installations. What am I, you know, a uh, steel set screw to one hole strap, strap concrete, a rack, a beam clamp. I'll just go ahead and do steel set screw to a strap and I'll select my number 12. Now here's all my number 12 branch assemblies. I'll just go ahead and select three number 12 half inch EMT steel set screw to a one hole strap. And then here's everything included in that assembly. So we're going to give you the, the couplings every 10 feet, uh, screws down to the washers, you know, EMT, the conduit connectors and that wire, of course course. So uh, very complete and that's all pre-built for you. So again, this is highlighted. That will be shown as my active part down here in the corner. Now I'm ready to do my takeoff. So we have it on connected and then we have single. So connected is going to be click to start the run, a click to change directions, click, click, and then a double click to end the run. So very simple. And same thing on my branch. I can, you know, do a lot of customization here. I can just go over to select and in the space bar toggles you back and forth as a shortcut. Now that I'm on select, I can double click on my branch. I can change the shape style, the color. Um, I may even do a text overlay. I know this is pretty useful for our users. So I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. I'll just say three, number 12, half inch. And it tells you that length of that branch as well. But now that I've done that, I have a text overlay over my branch. It's really helpful. If I need to account for any vertical values, I can just right click on this and add a drop value to the start of my run, to the end of it, to the start and the end, or exactly where I clicked. So let's say I want to add a drop value to the end of my run. That's going to give me a default drop value of eight feet because that's what it is on my system. I can always change that in my settings or I could just type into this box and let's say 10 feet. Now I have a 10 foot vertical drop value from the ceiling to the panel. So that's how you can add in uh, those, those drop values, those vertical values um, manually. However, we do have a feature called auto drop. So up at the top here, I can turn on auto start, I can turn on auto end, and I can even override that eight foot value. So now I have the drop set both the start of the run and the end. So I could say, hey, uh, for example, we'll just say you know six feet in the beginning and let's just say uh, uh, 10 feet at the end. So now that I have that set, when I go and do my run, I'll just do a random one here to show you it automatically accounts for those vertical values. So 
very useful feature there. So I will go ahead and turn on my legend as well. This is really cool. This is basically a live audit trail on screen as I do my takeoffs. So you could see everything being estimated. So that's really cool. A lot of our users like that. Uh, anything marked on my plan as well, it goes into this hot list here. So now I could just come over here and reactivate those parts. And then everyone loved this so much, they suggested a permanent hot list. So what we did was we created this favorites list. So something I highly recommend setting up, um, it, it's putting all the material that you typically use. And you can have multiple favorites lists. So you can have one for industrial, commercial, residential, and then you put all the material you typically use for jobs inside of here. So now at this point, I can come right into McCormick, bring up my plan, and then I have all my material right here. I could just select the material from my list and take it off. And same thing on these switches, you know, I can come in here and change the symbol and make it look more like a switch. All right, now I want to show you auto count, uh, something that'd be very useful if you have, you know, a lot of symbols on the plan. Uh, you're going to be able to, you know, generate a whole search on that and take it off at the same time. So I'll show you that. I'll go ahead and switch to a fresh plan. set my scale and now I'll go to auto count here so what I want to do is tell the system where to search this is so I don't pick up the legend or anything else on my plan and now it's prompting me to find the criteria so what I'll do here is I'll zoom in on one of these symbols I want to search just go ahead and put a small box around that symbol it's going to show you a picture of what you're searching and then go ahead and hit add search so it has a built-in calibration uh, as well, so it'll calibrate for best results. You used to have to set that manually, so it's pretty cool. All right, let's take a look here. So what I usually do is I check all, and then it's going to be from highest mat ra match rate percentage down to the lowest, so it may have picked up some stuff on the bottom that we don't want. So no big deal. looks like it, it got those other ones that I didn't want. You just right-click, uncheck items below. Super easy. And also clicking on these, it's going to put a box around where that is on your plan. But now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and select my telephone outlet out of my favorites list, and I'm going to hit accept takeoff. Now it's automatically counted and taken off those telephone outlets for me. And I'll kick on that legend there on this plan just to show you. I just took off 50 telephone outlets in probably less than 30 seconds. That's really gonna speed up the process for you. You know, same thing on these telephone outlets as well. You know, I, I can, you know, spin these around. I have a little handle here. I'll zoom in a little more. You know, I can turn these wherever I want. I can move them wherever I want. You can also just right click and rotate. So same thing, a lot of customization on all this stuff. And that is the auto count feature, uh, very, very useful. I'm going to go back to my previous plan, and I'm going to show you an example of auto home run. So this is actually a patented feature. Now you won't see this anywhere else, and we actually won the uh, Nika Showstopper Award for this feature specifically, so very popular. I'm going to go ahead and select my endpoint up at the top here, and I'm going to create my endpoint. And I can name this as well because I can have multiple endpoints, so I'll just say this is panel A. Now, to account for obstacles, I'm going to go ahead and create a routing path. So just below the EP, I'm going to select this symbol here, and I'm going to run a routing path through this hallway and then over to my panel. I can name this as well because I can have multiple routing paths. So we'll just say this is uh, path one. Um, and now for an example, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run these junction boxes to panel A. Uh, it's actually calling for three number six, three quarter inch. So I'll just grab that real quick. No big deal. Uh, go to number six and three number six three quarter inch there it is all right that's highlighted that's my active part and now what i'm going to do is go to the top here on this last option this pencil with the plus sign and now i have a few options so do i want to run this direct they say like as a crow flies or orthogonal squared off that's most commonly used we'll do orthogonal i don't have to use a path but i did create one i want to go ahead and use it and then to my one panel that i created my, my panel a and now all i'm going to do is left click and it's going to take the shortest path to my routing path to the panel for me this is our auto home run feature
everyone loves that one. That's definitely going to speed things up. Um, now, I can select this inspect and itemize tool up at the top. I can click right here and it tells me I have four runs going through here and I have a total of 242 feet. And if I hit this arrow here, it'll show me my individual runs and the amount of feet per run. Very useful. This thing is fully loaded as well. I mean, drawing tools, shapes, you can images, you can bring in, you can freehand, um, you know, there's marker set up, you can white out certain things, you could draw out lines, you can basically design a drawing if you'd like. Uh, and then we also have compare drawings. So instead of having to look side by side to figure out, you know, what's being revised, what's being changed, you can now overlap your plans and do take off just on top of that if you wanted. So uh, very cool, very useful. And I'll, I'll go ahead and just kind of give you a, a quick um glimpse of the compared drawing so what i'll do i have a revised plan for this lighting plan so this will be a good example go ahead i'll set my scale here okay now i'll go to compare drawings and then i can overlap my plans so i can overlap multiple plans too if i wanted but i'm just going to go ahead and do this revised plan here and now check it out i have an overlap of plans and so what you're going to want to do here is just line them up And then you can change the color to, to see it better visually, right? I can change whatever, you know, pri the primary drawing or whatever color. I'll just go ahead and do red. And then I can even remove the background um, so I have better contrast as well. So now I can clearly see what, what's being changed. And like I said, I could do takeoff right here on this. Like if, for, hypothetically speaking, I'm adding two receptacles. There we go, I've added those receptacles. So everyone loves that. They don't they don't miss that headache of having to look back and forth trying to figure out what the changes are. You could just overlap your plans now. All right, I'm gonna hit this back button and go back to my previous plan. Let's say at this point I'm happy with uh, my plan. Everything's been done, all my takeoffs done. We're gonna go ahead and close out a Design Estimating Pro. You could see everything here in my audit trail. It's all tracking my work. It's in order from when I took it off, all date and time stamped. This is including, you know, the labor, the material, everything. So uh, we have some adjusted quantities in this audit trail. What that is is th those drop values we added in. That's why those are highlighted and showing an adjusted quantity. You can also summarize this down so you could just see the total specifically for that material. Okay, now we're ready for our fourth step. This is extend. This will be a very detailed report. First thing I wanna mention up at the top right corner, so this is the total material cost for the job, and then we have the total labor hours to install. So those are my totals. Now looking at this report, I have a full itemized list. So this is down to wire nuts, screws, washers, everything laid out for us, full itemized list. Then we have the quantities of the material along with as a set default report, I have price one and bid labor, McCormick issued labor. So that is what's selected on my system. However, we do have this drop down where you can choose from the different combinations of price and labor. We can even pull a full material list here and I can go ahead and I could send this out to my supplier to get pricing. A lot of different ways we could look at this report as well, whether I want to filter my quota material or I want to expand and collapse everything by cost code. So now I can see here's my branch rough, the total material cost and the total labor hours to install. If I hit this drop down, it shows me everything included in my branch rough. So we have the built-in cost codes on our system. Going into my labels tab, I could take it a step further, whether I want to separate it out by area or separate it by system or both. Let's just say I'm gonna separate it out by area. Now going back to my report, I can see Here's office A, here's the total material cost, here's the total labor hours to install, and then everything included for office A. Same thing for office B, and same thing for warehouse. 
So all we did there was separate it by area. Now I can take it a step further and drill down as detailed as I want to. You know, maybe I want to see a report for just, um, let's say, Office B Power. Anything not highlighted in blue, we can ignore. There's no takeoff in those areas. So now it's just a report for Office B Power. So this is what I was mention mentioning in the labels section on our second step is, you know, how detailed do you want to get on your reporting? Something to think about when you create those labels. Go ahead and check all, all at the bottom here. It brings me back to my full report. I can also make edits on here as well if I needed to, you know, make an adjustment on price or make an adjustment on labor for that material. You can. And at this point, I look through my report. Everything looks good. I'm happy with it. We're going to go ahead. We're going to send it to our summary. Just telling me it's locking it to protect my work. Perfect. And I'll go ahead and close out of my extension report. And that's going to lead me into my fifth and final step, the bid summary. Now, taking a look at this, what we're working on here is my base bid. That's what's highlighted. I have the material cost and below that I have labor, but there's a check mark there. What that's indicating is there's a there's a reminder, there's something required. That's why we have this you know, big red box here. And what that's indicating is you have to apply your labor rates to the hours. So that is our next tab over. So we're gonna work through these tabs down here at the bottom. Going into our labor tab, this is where we apply our rates. So we have a total of 775 hours for this job. So a few different ways we can we can apply the rates. Um, here we have, you know, basically a, a template um, with just some examples. You can create, you know, create this. Um, so this is something you'll you'll get set up, and then you could just move over your know, your workers. So let's say I have a foreman on the job. I have a a sub foreman. I have a journeyman and I have an apprentice. So what I've done here, I built out my crew, I have my rates, and then I apply them to these hours. So you can do it by an hour amount, or you can do it by percentage and kind of save you on the math there. So we'll just say 50% of my hours will go to my foreman. We'll say 25% to my sub foreman. We'll say 15% to my journeyman and the remaining 10% of my hours to the apprentice. So now I've applied 100% of these hours to these rates. And we also have, you know, the burden, the burden percentage, and the amount per employee. Now, I can take it a step further and customize this. So adding a line, I could say, hey, you know, I'm just doing a, a flat rate. If you just do a flat rate and then you do 100% of the hours at whatever rate, you know, or you do it by name. Or let's say, hey, I got a, I got a helper out there. So my point is you can customize this however you'd like. In fact, we could take it a step further. You can set up different workers and different rates in different labor groups. These are just some examples on my system, Phoenix inside, Phoenix outside. And then we have the burden as well. So as detailed as FICA, health insurance, workman's comp, all that. You could set up different labor levels or burden levels. Okay, on to the next tab here, quotes. So this is where we enter in the quota material we need to get priced. So well, let's just say, for example, I have 5,000 in fixtures. Now that's accounted for. I can also put in the supplier and I can also attach a cost code. And same thing on any of these tabs, I can always add lines and customize this how I want. And I could do that on the job template and then just paste it over when, anytime you create a new job. So you'll have the paste options anytime you create a new job, what you wanna paste from. So a lot of different shortcuts to the system. Now our next tab here is subcontract. So anything we're subbing out for the job, and I'll just say, a, let's say a core drill at $1,200, just for an example there. Next one over is DJE, so direct job expense. So, you know, permits and fees, fuel, cleanup, parking, any of that stuff, we can account for it here. So I'll just say, for example, we'll just say 800 in permits and fees. Next tab over is the equipment rental. So if you're renting equipment for the job or maybe you own the equipment and you just wanna account for cost, you could do that here as well if you'd like. Um, I could just say, for example, $150 for a trailer for the week and I need it for three weeks. Give me a total of $450 for that trailer. So pretty cool, we provide you with a multiplier in there. That could be very useful. Next tab over is the bond table. So if you ever have to bond your jobs, we do provide the bond table. We have the ranges and the percentages here. And then our last tab is the tax tab. So wherever you're doing this job, you want to enter in the local tax rate right here. Now at this point, we've gone through all the tabs. We've 
added any additional expenses to the job. Now we can go back into our top sheet. I can see everything accounted for. Now I actually have a dollar amount attached to my labor hours, the fixtures, the core drill, permits and fees, and that trailer, all of that's in there. At this point, we need to add our overhead and profit to the job. So I can individually add it here in this column, or I can utilize this cell right here and add it to the total. So I'll just say, uh, for example, we'll just say 17% overhead. You can do a dollar amount or percentage and I'll just say 18% uh, profit. Now check it out, I've added that 17% overhead and 18% profit. Now I can make adjustments, you know, maybe I don't want, let's say um, I don't want, um, you know, overhead on my labor, let's say, or, you know, I wanna account for, let's say additional profit on quoted material, but I actually want less profit on my labor. So my point is you can make those adjustments if needed. And on the right, we have the raw cost, we have the tax, raw cost with tax, overhead, profit, total return dollars, total return percentage. And now we have finally got to the sell price for this job. So at this point, we've gone through the five-step process and this job is completed. So we just completed a job with McCormick Systems. Now what I can do is bring it into my proposal sheet. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and open up the proposal. And we do provide you with a template as well. You can have multiple templates if you'd like. I can pull in the labor, the material list and quantities, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do the bid proposal. And then on the left here, I can decide what I wanna merge over from my job. So you don't have to type anything up. You can merge it from the job, which is really cool. So I could say, hey, my base bid and my top sheet. And I'll go ahead and hit merge on that. If I had any additionals or wanted to show an alternative, I could, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do the base bid. Now look at this, it automatically populated that information. So here with the on our first step in the details, email address, phone numbers, all that good stuff that's in there. We have information along with our total sell price. Here, if we had any additionals, we don't, we could just take those out. If I need to type up any inclusions or exclusions, you could just type into this. And then we have signatures down below. You can also change this watermark to you know, your company, your symbol if you'd like. All of this is customizable. And we are ready to send that out. And on all these, even these tabs, I can create another tab. You know, Maybe I name it indirect job expense and then maybe it's for like supervision or something. So um, like I said, you can really customize this however you want. That's really where we stand out is easy to use, very complete and very customizable. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, leave you guys about 10 minutes uh, for questions. You can go ahead and type in some questions and I'll be uh, more than happy to answer those for you. I'm gonna go ahead and put my information on the screen here. So we have the company phone number, my email. You guys can feel free to shoot me an email uh, if you have any like specific questions or if you guys wanna schedule a, a demonstration, we can go into the system further and kind of do a uh, one-on-one. -on -one. So if any of you plumbing mechanical guys uh, wanted to get together on a demo, I could show you what we provide in the database and all that. But it, it is the same exact system. It's just a different database.
So I got a question on the implementation. Um, so we will provide you with training um, when with the purchase of the system. There's a one one time implementation fee which takes care of that. So um, you can do it via Zoom uh, where you share your, your your screen with your system. Um, they're going to take you through it, uh, make sure you're set up and everything's tailored to how you do things, and you have clarity on the system and, and how to best utilize it. Um, you can take it a step further. You can come to a class here in Chandler, Arizona. It's a three day class. Um, eight hours a day, um, or you can even take it a step further than that, and we can have a trainer actually come out to your business for a few days. So a few different options on the training. Um, outside of that, you have unlimited phone support. You have, um, you know, tutorials, manuals. We have our YouTube page. So um, we're, we're going to make sure you have all the information you need. And you know, we understand that you're, you're investing in, in in this company, and we're investing in you. You know, this is a this is a partnership. So we want you to be with us the longevity of your business. And like I said, feel free to just shoot me an email with any questions you may have, um, or you know, you can give me a call and we can always schedule a web demonstration. So we can we can go into the system further if you guys would like. I'm just going to give you guys a few more minutes here if you have any other questions. All right, if there's no more questions at this time, I wanna thank everybody for attending. Uh, feel free to reach out if you need any additional information, but you guys all have a great rest of your day.